Hello and welcome to another episode of the Christian Reef podcast. Today I have another very, very special guest. Uh, this is a very massive honour for me. So you're going to hear me maybe trembling a bit, but I'm going to try and keep it as professional as I possibly can. Now, as you guys know, I spent a long time living in Estonia. I lived there for three years, was visiting for about five and this particular guest of mine was the first, I believe the first musician I'd ever actually heard in Estonia about five years ago. And uh, shout out to Ami Lepik, who is the girl that I met and traveled to Estonia with. And she introduced me to this band, uh, Martin Gudengas's band, and a bunch of other excellent musicians in Estonia, Vaiko Plik, for instance, um, a bunch of others. Point being, when I was first introduced to this man, he was operating under his own name and now his band has now renamed and they're called Miliadit, which in English translates to billions. And uh, yeah, he's here. I've got him on the show. Um, hello and welcome to the show, Martin. How are you doing? Hi, Christian. Uh really touching to hear all this <laughs> great to be here yeah man um <laughs> with, with, <laughs> I, I will say just on, on a personal level like the music for me obviously has a very personal meaning in terms of you know connection to estonia and stuff like hmm. you know i have like my own estonian playlist now that i live back in the uk it's like this thing that i refer to constantly so i have all these different musicians i heard throughout the time and i, I said this to a, a previous estonian guest of mine actually as a matter of fact i said that you know, as far as I'm concerned, the Estonian music scene is very underrated from the international sense. And I'm, I'm to be honest, I'm very stunned that musicians such as yourself and Vaiko Eplik don't really have like more international kind of recognition. Because on an objective level, like I've been a musician for many years myself and, you know, myself and Ami, who I mentioned, are kind of like stunned by that. We don't really understand how it's how it's possible. Mm -hmm. And I think that one could make the argument of, you know, it's maybe accessibility and stuff like that. But. I, I, d I think we're just, uh, you know, um, we're not consciously, that's something that we're not uh, really uh, consciously trying to do, like pushing mm. it out internationally. That's, uh, if it happens, it, it happens. And I, I think we're uh, quite aware that there's a, there's a huge uh, market out there and, right. and, uh, and we're, quite happy doing our stuff uh, in, in our homeland but uh, right. it's uh, yeah it's, it's touching to hear that 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 uh, you know it, it has some sort of some sort of impact outside as well yeah i mean like it's not obviously just from the, the personal perspective but obviously from the kind of let's say on a more professional level you know your band mm. has done very well i believe it was the 2018 estonian music awards you won three awards y yes yeah. correct <laughs> <laughs> album of the year <laughs> Uh, this was for Kunagilanes. Yes. Correctly, yes, which is... Okay, is it never or ever in the West? I'd say ever in the West. Ever in the West, okay. It's, it's like like once upon a time in the West, but uh, it, it's, uh, yeah, it would be like a, a rip... It, 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 it would have been a rip-off if, if, if it translated like that. So <laughs> I think ever in the West uh, uh, sounds, sounds quite nice in English. It's, it's tricky because... Um, We've, we, we, like when I was learning Estonian, you know, I would always have this problem with Google Translate and stuff. And for the most part, you just can't rely on it. But like for some words, mm. you can. But with things like this, <laughs> it was obviously because it's more, I guess, poetic. So if you even try yeah. to just, like turn Estonian poetry or music into, you know, English, it's it doesn't, yeah, that's tricky. <laughs> it just loses its meaning. It's tr tricky, yeah. But yeah, uh, <laughs> just bringing it back to the awards. Obviously, yeah, you won an album of the year, debut album of the year. Obviously, okay, first yeah. time album under the name of Milia did. Am I correct yes. in thinking that it's exactly the same band members as well? For, for uh, yeah, that? I mean, um, we started uh, the four of us, uh, mm -hmm. Beto, Raul, and Christian. Uh, we uh, came together uh, in 2014 right yeah yeah uh, uh, and we recorded my uh, uh, my second solo album called Proctiline Mez which right. translates uh, Practical Man <laughs> and um, then me and uh, the guitarist uh, Raul we went uh, together uh, to live and study in Berlin oh wow okay um, and uh, actually, well, uh, we stayed there for nine months. It, it had to be 
uh, three years, but we, we came back after nine months. It didn't quite work out for, for different yeah. <laughs> reasons. <laughs> but, uh, but then I reckon that, you know, um, I mean, I was uh, quite, um, quite empty or drained. Okay. Like, uh, creative wise i felt that i i um is that i even, didn't is that even possible for you <laughs> uh, it, it seems so it seems so wow okay. uh, i mean i felt that i i didn't have anything to 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 give to right, do right, to, right, to, right. to and um but but then on the other hand um you know we still you know we kept in touch when me and Roel were were uh, over there in berlin and mm. Uh, and actually, the album Brockdale in a Mess, uh, we just um, we only got to play like three gigs with it because uh, it wow. came out in like September 2014. Right. right. Uh, we did we did our three uh, gigs, and after the last gig, uh, I mean two days after that, we we uh, Iron Roll uh, uh, drove. So. So, so it kind of, um, it kind of um, just you know stalled, right? Okay. The, the process, okay. Um, and yeah, and as I said, when I, when I came back, I I felt that you know um, we I felt that we have a lot of like potential together, and on the other hand, <clears throat> I myself, as I said, I couldn't I couldn't <coughs> do. At least I felt that I, I couldn't, um, you know, uh, do much. Uh, so, so then I, then I um, uh, suggested we we became a band. That, you know, uh, it's it was kind of kind of like a, a transition, like a transition yeah. from from a solo artist to a to a, to a band. Um, it was quite actually quite. Um, you know, uh, controversial, I'd say, the process. What, what made it controversial? Because I have to say, like, I was pretty surprised at the switch as well. Because mm -hmm. when I was, when I first saw that you dropped the, the name change, I figured like, ah, oh, okay, this is definitely going to be like a change up in sound and stuff, a different direction. I mean, that's generally what artists tend to do when they go for a dramatic name change. And, mm -hmm. you know, I always kind mm -hmm. of figured that, the decision to just use your name you know it would because i've seen you play live under martin gunningas and under um Milia did and i have to mm. say that um both times it just kind of came across as as like um i don't want to say like standard bags that's not really the right way to put it but like it didn't okay it didn't feel like martin gunningas with you know his backing band it was more like mm -hmm. this is his band it just happens to be under under this name kind of thing mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. but yeah you use the word controversial I'm, I'm interested to to understand why is what was um kickback? because um i i wanted to sort of uh i wanted to see how uh cooperation cooperation worked um with um you know with not just by by doing my my own private stuff uh, my my personal stuff uh, mm -hmm. but 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 with uh, you know other band members you know okay. uh obviously me and Raul had already done some stuff and actually uh, the song Dog will be the ball mm -hmm. uh, i think you might know is that was um, the first song i ever heard by you yeah and Incredible and song. i think it's like a that song also is like a sort of a, like a um important um pivotal point right right um i mean uh the song it, it became um was a like a huge um it was a huge wave um which sort of a bit uh, like overshadowed the the whole um uh, and Mez album you know hmm. because it, it became like um uh, mm, yeah the most known 
known and, and loved um, mm. piece, I think. And uh, it was something that, that uh, me and Raul uh, like did together. Right. right. Um, and yeah, and then afterwards, yeah, I sort of like, uh, I decided consciously to like put myself aside. Okay. And and uh, and experiment uh, with uh, with uh, with the band concept. You know, it's really interesting that you say that because as I was tracking back with the research on your career, you know, mm. obviously, you know, you started with um, your appearance on S. Diotsip Superstari, which is uh, Estonian mm. Idol mm -hmm. for those who don't know, mm -hmm. and. Mm -hmm. um, Obviously, back then I could tell like you're very young and <laughs> you're kind of it's funny. Yeah. You know, it's like, hey, here I am, world. Like, you know, hello. And um, <laughs> I, I could I could already see the talent there, but um, you just needed, yeah, you needed people to work with. You know, every everyone is, yeah. is different. I mean, yeah. I have to say with myself um, in the bands that I've been, I've always put it down to good chemistry. And mm. I find I, the interesting thing with your career is that, you know, you did that and then you, you were already doing music projects before that. But around the sort of 2010 time you were doing, I guess, kind of hard rock style. And then you did you started releasing albums purely under your name. And as you said, with Bartolina Mears and Yano, it was all kind of like you said, you had like these key singles on there, very powerful songs. And then everything else would kind of be highly experimental which i've always kind of yeah. found is is quite un unique to you uh, I, I suppose vico oblique does it a little bit as well but uh, yeah, with, with I you, it, yeah I, th I think with you it's a <laughs> bit more like there it's like there are no rules like there will be a fitting narrative with it and and like every song will, will sound like it's supposed to be there mm. but it's like yeah, I can understand your point about Dago uh, Bidiva. Like, I get, I get what you mean, mm -hmm. uh, but I still find that interesting because I, I personally felt like you'd kind of felt found your footing with with those albums, and then when you made the change to Milo, I mean, I, I remember actually seeing you in possibly it was either twenty because I think I've seen you twice, two or three times, but it was definitely during Milo, and I think you'd either just released Kunig. Gonna um, gonna give me yeah. Sorry, the point eludes me. It's it's because I've seen you at least two or three times, right? Yeah. One of them was when you were playing with Vocal Blick and he was headlining. I think this was around 2015 time, and then I saw you uh -huh. when you debuted the album at uh, Radio Maya, and that was excellent. Oh, yeah. That was very cool. Yeah. And then I think maybe i saw you after that or something but like at one of those shows you kind of said like hey yeah you know um now we're milia did uh but this is like an old track from you know way back when and it was kind of like you saying like it's not that we're you know moving away from this like it's bad music it's just that you know we've taken a step forward and now this yeah. is yeah what we're doing now and that was what we were doing then and and such and actually it leads on me onto another question do you think that moving forward you're going to ever play those songs or is it just okay this is me did now and like you know Gunagilanes is like your debut and you know you move forward kind of thing um i think uh, at the moment uh there's a there's a very little chance of uh this of Milardi playing uh, something fr from Brockdil in Emes other than than Dagur Bidival okay um it's just uh, just the way it is at the moment <laughs> because <laughs> um although yeah personally um yeah i've i've uh, done these songs when i play like solo okay yeah, yeah. I, I i do sometimes uh, sometimes uh, play these, them yeah these are your acoustic shows <laughs> acoustic shows yeah uh, but uh, but with Miller it's uh, we we stick to we stick to the group of all because uh, for us it's uh, it's like like a starting point ah. for, for actually for the band because uh, it was the first song we recorded uh, together it oh, was that is uh, interesting see yeah you could use that as as you said like a stepping stone it's like okay we build we build from here <laughs> yeah yeah it was it was under the name of martin Guingas, but but on i mean we we recorded it in um in spring 2014 mm -hmm. and uh, and in in summer we recorded the 
the whole album and then was released in September. Um, but yeah, uh, as I said, um, as I said, yeah, formally it was like, yeah, it, I, I felt, yeah, that, uh, that we needed some kind of sort of like a transition. Right, right. Well, thank you for sharing, man. That's that's really awesome to hear. Like that, that makes logical sense to me as well. I could kind of tell that by listening to the mm. shift in the sound and stuff. And it's, it's well, yeah. Also, also because you know, I myself, uh, I'd say, I if I if I had to um, label myself, mm -hmm. uh, I, I'd say like I'm I'm quite quite a full on like an indie indie guy, right. You, you mentioned I did he heavy rock, but <laughs> I mean, I to, to my ear, it was. I mean, it's. I can't remember. I'm sorry, I don't remember the the musician that you played with, but it's on Spotify. Everyone yeah, can find yeah. it. Uh, yeah. If you type in Martin Gunningas, and um, mm. I was I was blown away because I, I hadn't actually previously put it in in my. You know, I was just adding songs to my SD uh, playlist, mm. and mm. I was like, wow, I haven't heard this before. And then it's just you. <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't know how to put it. Heavy singing. I don't know. It's <laughs> I think it was just you know, um, it was just me being or or a, or a guy yeah. being uh, young <laughs> <laughs> and with with hard edges. See, so um, you you say this right, but mm. then okay, with your most recent release, and I'm not talking about the single. We'll get to that. Um, so, Emailina, the EP, mm -hmm. which I believe mm -hmm. was released. Forgive me if I'm wrong. Last year or yes, okay. Last year in spring in, right, in May. Right, right. I, I I was not expecting this. It dropped. I was living in Estonia at the time, and I was like, "Damn, this is great!" <laughs> and I particularly liked um, Emilina, which again, bringing it back to what we were talking about before. I'm a line. <laughs> I'm a lion. <laughs> Who says that? <laughs> Please tell me no one, no foreigners have said that to you because that's painful. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I mean, th there was that rocky kind of song, mm. that little song, and I was... Mm. I was Riff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, mm. I, I was surprised to hear that from you. Like, it's, it's not out of character for you, but it was... It was definitely uh, a switch up for that particular EP because I felt like that was an ep that was saying like hey we're trialing stuff it's not a continuation of gunagilanes but it's kind of you know it's like mm. before we get to the next album here's like some exactly. stuff maybe exactly. this didn't yeah like maybe this didn't make the record but maybe it wasn't supposed to make the record because it's not quite it was it was it was something we recorded uh, during the gunagilanes sessions uh -huh. but we um couldn't finish it uh, i mean and and but when the album had to come out and and then uh we we finished it later yeah like in it took like took a year to finish it actually and then yeah then we we decided to put it on on the eps uh, sort of like a, a middle middle section <laughs> i think that's a solid choice um mm -hmm. do, on, on that topic do you intend to release more EP, eps in the future is this like a regular fixture we can expect from you <laughs> Um, yeah. EPs either or or even just plain singles, I guess. I mean, uh, okay, yeah. time will show because uh, first, I mean, we're we're still in the in the process of uh, of um, doing uh, the second album by Emilia Rid, which mm -hmm. actually is, is more or less mixed already, but uh, we're still uh, planning. Um, okay, I'll, I'll the just dates. I just say this now. So Martin told me in our messages in the follow-up to this interview because uh, I expected that he was still working on this record, and he said, "No, we got this done, and we got it done within about two or three months." And my reaction was, "Oh my God, you work fast!" <laughs> How? <laughs> no, actually, no. It 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 took quite a lot of time. I mean, we okay. we started off um, uh, last year. It was 2019, right? So so. <laughs> I mean, we had these uh, band camps, okay. uh, a lot of lot of like pre work. I mean, most of the last year went doing this, uh, like preparing the album, and uh, uh, so we um, we recorded it uh, uh, last year October 
mm-hmm. and and it's been a it's been a very long mixing process and uh, apparently it's about now it's starting to come to an end so at the moment we are looking what would be a like a good release date right right yeah because i remember you saying maybe it would be in autumn 2020 i seem to recall somewhere online it said yes like yes and it, it seems it seems uh, it seems so that it's uh, i mean it's it's quite certain that we will re- release it <laughs> this year <laughs> Okay, give it that. Well, that's excellent news. At least we've got like a, a rough idea. I was going to ask you yeah. actually when it was released, but obviously that kind of clears that question up. So roughly yeah. autumn 2020, guys, look out. For yes, that. yes, that's correct. Now, you've released a single. Is this a single off of the upcoming album, or is this like a taster teaser? That's 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 the single, and that's the uh, also the the name of the album. Oh. Malubane Mamutun. Oh, you said it so eloquently. So and and <laughs> I'm glad and, you said it. Uh, I I butchered it. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it. I think Malubanet uh, Mamutum, the song, uh, it would be the opening track. Right now, okay. I don't obviously know Estonian to an you know very very great degree, but you know I know a fair bit and from what i can understand based on what you've written about so, so okay so malubanet mamutan means mm-hmm. i promise i'll change in english i'll change yeah and from what you kind of wrote online um to me it kind of this is on your facebook page uh, so mm-hmm. people can get a lot of updates about Milo did's music through the through the Facebook page. They're actually strangely unlike most bands they're quite uh, active on their page and it's actually them. So that's quite nice. Because <laughs> normally it's like a social media team taking care of it and stuff. Uh, but anyway, um, basically there was a series of pictures and posts with uh, various members of the band with this kind of creative artwork and stuff. And then like a long passage kind of explaining, uh, from what I understood, uh, talking about things like recovery, reflection, mental health awareness. Uh, am I right yeah. I'm along the lines? Yeah, correct, correct. Coming out of the closet, sort of <laughs> right. mental, okay. mental terms. So you know, uh, dealing dealing with oneself. So that's kind of what this album is kind of about. It's like one whole. I guess so, and also I guess it's it's something that uh, uh, it's a theme, or it's it's something that um, unites us, ah, okay. and. Um, and you know, obviously, there's um, uh, everything has in life has its reasons, and I think there's a there's a sort of a deeper reason why the four of us are um, are working and playing uh, together. And you know, it's it's about like exploring the reasons, you know, wow. uh, why why we do the stuff we do. I dig that. And, uh, yeah and um so i wasn't um, expecting so, such a deep answer <laughs> i was expecting it to just to be like yeah you know we went through some stuff and this is like recovery and reflection and such but this is actually yeah very that, deep. that's 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 i mean that's that's true as well it's a recovery reflection it's it's trying to trying to um uh you know understand uh to to make sense of mm. stuff and um, of of relationships as well, you know, because uh, it hasn't always been clear, you know, mm. uh, in yeah, in terms of, of of our band as well, because um, mm, yeah, it goes back. I think it goes back uh, to our. Uh, our beginning as well as i as i i mentioned um the word controversial i, I think it's uh the album is about yeah recovering and exploring and and finding the finding the reasons why why milliard it and uh, and also about every person's own like identity in a in a deeper level and and also um in terms uh in in like in the group dynamics you know in the band like Mm. relationships with each other and 
yeah so okay let, let's let's take it on that on that kind of uh, level for a second so mm -hmm. when it comes to the writing process with me um mm -hmm. i mean you mentioned you kind of i guess kind of gave over more reins or you you wanted it not to be just about you but about everyone which kind of implies that you wanted like them to have the rest of the band to have more um input i guess into the songwriting process. yeah yeah i wanted to be about everyone yeah okay okay so um, and uh yeah okay so when you're writing together uh is it like a, a jam kind of thing or do you sort of because yeah, i know when when i used to do songwriting in, in bands i would you know, even as, as recently as last year, I would always kind of have lyrics prepared, come in, we would jam, we would kind of figure it out together and, and do it like that. But obviously every brand mm -hmm. has different ways. I mean, uh, just taking it random, like Metallica back in the day would do a thing where they had Lars Ulrich, the drummer, and James Hetfield, the, the singer, kind of, they would go away, write the music and come back and say, hey guys, right, this is what we want you to play. <laughs> which uh, <laughs> was a bit controversial, obviously, at the time, but apparently the rest of the band were cool with it. But I suppose it depends who you're working with. But yeah, just talk True, to us yeah. a little bit about like how that songwriting process works with me. So, so um, it's um, either it's, it's usually we, we um, yeah, there, there are some tracks that we've um, jammed that, that, uh, that started with jamming. And then later on, we de developed uh, the track. And What's there the were... Estonian word for jamming? We just say jam. Oh, okay. Let's jam. <laughs> jam, jam, yeah. Let's jam. Jam, yeah. <laughs> jam, yeah. We say, we say jam. Uh, well, a jam also means moors. Do you know what moors means? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, literally. Yeah, jam. Jam, yeah. Jam, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, um, either that or um, uh, well, on Gunagilanes, our first album, there were many tracks uh, uh, by with cooperation. Uh, I mean, me and Raul's co co cooperating together. You know, I you know, so, I mean, for instance, even. Yeah, and also even even like Imelina, the mm -hmm. the track. I mean, I I jam the the riff, right? Uh, and and uh, Raúl built the whole whole guitar world right. onwards, and and then later on the, yeah. the rhythm by others. Um. But uh, in regards regarding the uh, Moluban et Mamutun uh, album, uh, most of the tracks are like demos from um, from uh, Raoul's uh, archive. Oh. So we had the we had uh, we had these uh, band camps in uh, last year spring. And we got to listen like different demos, like there were at least 30, 40 of them, I guess. Okay. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, but um, basically uh, these are the, like we pick, picked out some 15 or 14 mm -hmm. and then we worked, worked on those. So, so was this a kind of thing where you were like looking at these demos and saying like, yeah, we can kind of see like a theme in terms of the sound here. Like this is what we're going to go for kind of thing. Actually, actually, no, there were, I'd say the, uh, it's, it's probably kind of a, uh, rather a eclectic album sound wise. Um, it's, uh, it has these dance music elements, electronic music, but also, also, post-punk and uh, grunge elements, and and uh, wow, there's, a, okay. there's really various various stuff over there happening. This is and, way, way more experimental than this one. Yeah, I, I think so, and also it. Uh, I think it's also uh, a bit more energetic as well. 
So that's like the key difference between this record and Kunigilana's maybe would be. I'd say, but moment. but uh, but on the other hand, uh, I'd had to. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm still in the middle of the process. Is still you know on, and perhaps it's too too early to to shout something uh, some something out. But uh, but yeah, it seems to me so. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, and okay, so taking it back to obviously being within the music scene, I mean, I would argue you've kind of made it to the top in terms of of like the things you can achieve. I mean, I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. Are there any major goals that you're still kind of looking for, familiar did to achieve, like maybe some awards or or like particular goals that you guys have in mind that you're like, okay, this is what we need to do next, kind of. Thing? We need. We need. I think what we need is more um, consistency. Uh, we need to. We desperately need to play more. Right. More gigs, obviously. I mean, it. The, I mean, the, that situation is 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 the same for for most most of musicians but but we had the situation already uh last year so okay. um uh, basically not a lot has changed for us so um we need to we need to be more consistent and i think uh we're quite aware that um it's good good music we're doing <laughs> but but, <hope> so. <laughs> but 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 uh, uh, yeah, it seems that uh, you know it hasn't. I think it it hasn't reached. Uh, it hasn't reached uh, to people. Okay, all right. Well, let, on on that kind of topic, because um, you did briefly mention that you wanted to kind of focus on the Estonian kind of. Let's say the music market, if you like. I don't know. That's probably mm -hmm. the worst way to put it, but you know mm -hmm. what I mean. Um, yeah. Now, with Estonian musicians, there is a kind of variance. Some musicians decide to play, uh, you know, sing in English. For instance, uh, You It and the Two Dragons is a very good example. Mm -hmm. Obviously, first of all, you know, yeah, they are touring in Europe and stuff, so there mm -hmm. is that. But then I could sort of make the counter argument that, you know, there are the bands in the world that, you know, sing in their own tongue, like, um, for example, Sigurdos from Iceland um, mm. famously sings in their um, in their own tongue. So on that kind of level, I, I suppose I have like two main questions here with this mm. one, um, which I, I guess I kind of know the answer to, but I think it might be interesting to just get your perspective on mm. is um, why do you choose to to sing purely in Estonian? Because you have actually recorded a song way back when, which I believe was under me did, which was called Mr. Please. Mr. Please, that's right. 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 And <laughs> I, I dug it. I thought it was cool. Um, I, I found it very interesting, actually, because I couldn't tell the difference between you singing in English or Estonian. It sounds exactly the same, which is great. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, in some musicians, you can kind of hear it. Like, uh, for instance, um, what's the name of that female singer? Uh, Elena Bourne. Um, mm -hmm. she, when she sings in English, she has a kind of a... I, I guess like an American-ish twang, I guess you could say. Oh, yeah, yeah. But yeah, then and then other musicians, like you and the Two Dragons, I would never have known they were Estonian unless you told me. Like, I mm. was kind of stunned by that. Mm. Um, so yeah, I guess that that's kind of my first question is is what's the choice there? And and the second question being, you know, I think, if, if you permit me to say this, I, I think you are kind of underselling yourself with, with this band. Mm. I think that you you got some legs in terms of playing in Europe. And I don't just mean this as like from a fan perspective. I mean, if bands like Sigur Ross can do it, you know, who's to say that you guys can't do it? I mean, you and the two dragons did it, you know, I mean, true. I think, um, you know what I mean? There's well, <clears throat> why I sing in Estonian, I, I feel that, uh, it makes, um, I think Estonian is such a rare, Mm. language i mean I'm, i think there's frankly i think there's too much english in the world <laughs> i think we yeah you're right i think right. i think we don't need to, uh, the world doesn't need another uh, another english uh singing <laughs> band or i mean yeah uh on the on the one hand um and on the other hand i guess uh, there's a bit of Maybe masochistic tendency as well because <laughs> I'd say it's uh, 
it's a bit harder to to create or to to do proper songs mm -hmm. in, in Estonian than in, in in English. Okay. So um, I guess I I sort of push myself as well. Right. Uh, and uh, yeah, I really like the the sound of, of Estonian. I agree with you. But I uh, but say. I but I, but I do enjoy I do enjoy saying that. Um, uh, uh, on the other hand, I, I do enjoy singing in English, and in fact, I've I've done so. Uh, I mean, all, all my life, it started out with you know with the Beatles uh, when I was like three years old, and uh, you know moved on to Queen and and prog rock stuff and you know I, you I like prog rock as well uh, of course I mean oh uh, you're, you're talking to a you're talking to a uh, uh, Genesis fan and uh, and uh, yeah Genesis and King, no, King Crimson sense. and was it was a huge huge thing for me when I was a teenager or even even, even younger <laughs> now I understand why I like your music so much <laughs> because <laughs> it's like all these different bands that i listen to as well like i remember actually yeah let's let's quickly talk about um the sound of your band because um in, on your band's website and uh the facebook page it's kind of described as just like indie rock i guess which i think is just really underselling it which i mean bands can go on for hours talking about genres and subgenres. that's fair but um it genuinely is kind of hard to define your sound. I mean, you know, I listen to quite a lot of experimental music anyway from all around the world, and I wouldn't be able to put a label on, on what you guys produce. Like, what, if you had to try and define it, what, what kind of genres would you use? Mm. Uh, you know, <laughs> the genre we we uh, termed ourselves called oh. um, um, Ezo-Rock. Ezo rock, yeah, I like esoteric. Ah, nice. <laughs> I dig it. I dig it. So it, uh, yeah, it uh, sort of blends in with the things we we uh, discussed earlier. You know, because we, I think Estonians are quite. They can be quite like introspective and mm -hmm. and reserved on the one hand, <laughs> yeah. and on the other hand, you know, we, you know. Yeah, like to rock as well sometimes. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, myself being full on indie guy, <laughs> which for me means like uh, you know, uh, you know, growing with my guitar in the bedroom. Right, right, yeah. yeah. And and uh, you know, self-taught as well. Sorry. Yeah, are you a self-taught musician? Yeah, 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 yeah. Me too. Me too. That's the way. To go. Uh, that's the way to go. And uh, but but by the way, all the uh, uh, the um, rest of the Millard are, are quite 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 uh, highly trained musicians. Ooh. And uh, and I think uh, at the moment uh, most of the you know sound wise. Yeah. Mm, is that's that's all all like their favor and uh my my part is mostly you know mm, blending in with the with, with the music actually you know because uh okay. again uh, again i'm talking about the shift from martin winning to mm -hmm. um you know it used to be me and my acoustic guitar and then you know um developing from there mm -hmm. uh but with uh milliard it uh we have already the demo the music right and then there's me uh, uh collaborating or uh with with my uh with my melodies and my my thoughts and and lyrics you know so so there's a there's a i think there's a there's a huge uh, difference there you know what's interesting to me actually is is that i kind of always pictured you as being uh 
like the leader, like not just the front man, but like the leader in terms of the direction of the sound and such and, and like that over that mm. process. But the way you explain it kind of almost paints you as less a leader and more a kind of like an orchestrator or uh, someone yeah. who like guides and like suggests rather than actually saying like, this is what we should do. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, that's uh, that's my my uh, my role uh, at the at the moment, uh, and uh, I'm of course I'm very uh, I'm sure that I'm um, I'm gonna uh, release solo albums yes. in my life as well. <laughs> um, that's news to my ears, and I, I think it's. Uh, it's it's very much needed uh, mm. but um would you say it's needed for you in terms of just having like another outlet for maybe ideas that don't necessarily fit milia did but could fit like something else yes yes that and uh and also uh yeah okay absolutely absolutely awesome. so so yeah it's basically um Okay. Doing, experimenting, and then doing, doing different stuff, and uh, the the music, uh, musical director or, or producer, I, I guess, uh, is uh, uh, is Raul Oyama. Interesting. Okay, so I, and, guess, I guess you guys have like a songwriting co partnership, like, a bit like Lennon and McCartney in 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 terms of <laughs> like you know that that kind of. You guys work together. Obviously, the whole band works together, but it's like mainly you two kind of. Yes, yes, I'd say I'd say so. But I'd, I'd uh, as I uh, also um, said to the guys uh, a lot of times that I'd love to see like uh, everyone, you know, yeah. come out of the the closets, <laughs> music wise, you know, come on, and come on, guys, come on. Like it's come on, <laughs> come on, it's fun. Come, sure. on. <laughs> <laughs> come yeah. step into the world. And then and you know try try different stuff and you know show yourself. Okay, we're well, switching yeah. it up for a second. Um, let's talk a little bit briefly about your personal life. Uh, don't worry, not delving in too much. But um, <laughs> obviously, you know, in in let's say the last kind of five years or so, you've you've become a father. And uh, obviously, being a father, you know, has a huge impact on any man's life. So I won't ask you that obvious question. <laughs> but <laughs> since you're a musician, has it like what has been the impact, if any, on your songwriting now that you're a father? Like, do you see the world differently now? And and has that kind of maybe matured the music or, or something like uh, that? Yeah, I mean um, the. Uh... The latest single, Luban and Mamut, and I think it's uh, very much influenced by myself being a father because uh, it looks. I mean, I'm, I've I've started thinking it about thinking about uh, what kind of a world would I live? Would I, uh, you know, sort of uh, present mm. to to my sons? Right, right, right. And then what kind of uh, uh, example am I, you know? Wow. So uh, it's about, yeah, you know, being, being, being more conscious of, of oneself and also, you know, of the stuff I do okay. and of the, of the, um, uh, searching for a word, um, impression, impression I give and, uh, yeah. Awesome. I kind of figured that's the kind of the answer you would give, but it, again, on the, on the, the deep level, <laughs> it's, yeah, this, this certainly does seem like one of those records that, um, represents like a shift in your life and, and in your private life and stuff. And yeah, it's, it's interesting because uh, when we were recording uh, mm. uh I had my, my first son was born in uh, 2017 okay. uh, in the summer. 
and uh, and my second son was born when we were basically recording our second album. Damn. So 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 both of these uh, of of these albums are really really like linked somehow with with uh, the parenthood situation as well. And I guess, um, uh, and fun fact, by the way, that uh, the same goes with uh, our drummer, Christian. <laughs> uh, he had a daughter when uh, we released Kunagilanes just a few months before. Wow. And, uh, and yeah, I think the same pattern follows. And, um, what I was saying is that, uh, yeah, in, in terms of songwriting as well, uh, actually, I haven't really, uh, I think, even even like have had the had the time or excuse to to sit down with the guitar or or do my own stuff because right, of right. being being really busy with with the family and uh and i think that's sort of a situation at the moment uh, like suits me well that's it like um yeah yeah i'm gonna say i, 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 I can see the connections the puzzle <laughs> I, i'm impressed because you know i imagine it must be very very tough to kind of balance that you know like having having this family and stuff and having two boys yeah. and a wife and everything and then yeah and it's like two that. two families basically yeah yeah absolutely i was, I was going to say this before that um being in a band is is a lot like being you know it, it is a family because you you go through a lot together highs and lows and such and, and you, but the key thing is you stick together and you true work yeah. through things so yeah just very impressive that you uh you're pulling this all off and and again man i mean i know you say that maybe it's it's not i, I still think it's very consistent to, to have like some sort of a record every single year some bands don't even manage to get a record out of you three years so <laughs> the yeah fact that you've got you know you got the kunigalanas in 2017 uh Lina in 2019 and now you've got one that's penned for potentially the end of 2020 i mean that's that's excellent you know Thanks. Yeah, I I I uh, agree because uh, <laughs> consistency is is a good thing. It's it's much needed. Okay, switching it up a little bit. Uh, just some random quick fire questions here. Now, you and I mentioned Valko Eplik very briefly before. Now, for those who don't know, he's also a very prominent Estonian musician. Um, and he performed famously in uh, the Eurovision Song Contest at one point. <laughs> and I believe you did, or you entered, I know, okay, I know that Milia did, did. you entered uh, Esti Lal, which is, as I understand, the kind of like pre-show before you go on to Eurovision. So, yeah. yeah, you go through these and you got to the semi-final, I believe. Is that right? That's right. That's right. That's right. right. Well, that was a travesty. You should have won. But anyway, <laughs> I was like, "What? What do you mean they haven't won?" <laughs> but anyway, um, but yeah, you know, you haven't been through to Eurovision, have you? You've or have I got that right? Or right? Yeah, you got that right. Got that right. Okay. Not, not um, particularly, not particularly keen on on <laughs> on it as well. Either. It's interesting, isn't it? Because like for many musicians, they say it's like career suicide like and i don't think that's always true it depends on, on the country you, you're in mm -hmm. but for, mm -hmm. for some musicians in certain countries it's like after they did that they just never went anywhere but then for some musicians they did really well so it's very strange <laughs> yeah it depends on kind of a what kind of person are you or uh, what you're where you're comfortable at you know? right 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 yeah i mean I, i'd agree i i was kind of surprised to see you guys enter in but i kind of figured it was the sort of thing of like well why not why wouldn't they you know <laughs> yeah we needed uh, we we just wanted uh, the uh we needed the publicity for yeah. for the yeah. album as well and we we needed to you know to to get to television because uh, right. television is is the magic box <laughs> it is indeed. <laughs> now, um, obviously, I, I brought up Vico Oblik, and um, obviously, the connection with you guys, as I understand, you know, your friends and uh, fellow musicians, you've played together many times. Um, 
when you were on SD Opposite Superstarty, you famously played with him uh, just before you got voted off in, I believe, the semis as well. Yeah. You did a duet together. Um, now, that was very early on in your career. This was, for those who don't know, this was 2009, so it's 11 years ago. Yeah. And um, I was always kind of interested by that. Um, I, I guess what the question I have is, what is your connection or relationship between you two? Because your, your sounds are very similar. Um mm -hmm. They our, are, our voices voices are are uh, similar as well sometimes right, right, right. Uh, well, I and i don't think there is like some very distinct differences as well yeah obviously when i when i really sort of dove into like his discography and yours i could mm. really notice the difference like i feel that um <laughs> vaiku is he is very experimental but maybe less so than than yourself um like and i don't know it's 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 kind of different there's a different vibe I don't know how to yeah. explain it to yeah, yeah. other musicians will know what I mean. <laughs> you, you know, but, uh, <laughs> obviously, he's a. Uh, I have massive respect for for him, and right. and obviously we have some uh, similar similar bands and similar music we have uh, been fans of. I guess is there like a uh, rivalry there? <laughs> from, but no, there's there's never been a rivalry. Okay, but. Uh, uh, well, early, you mentioned 11 years ago, there was a lot of uh, comparing. And, right. Uh, right. and, and uh, when, I, when I came on the scene, you know, they, uh, people, people said, you know, uh, yeah, do we need another, another white core? Or, um, and people, right. yeah, sometimes still, uh, <laughs> sometimes still confuse me. Um, not, see, I mean, I, not, I not me, but, but they confuse themselves, being I can, confused. <laughs> I can see why people would say that, but I think if you do listen enough into both your, you know, your discography, mm -hmm. like I said, that you can, it's so different, especially now. I mean, yeah. one can make the argument, I mean, it's, if you look at like Vico's early records, it's exactly the same as like what you were doing, like with the very early records as well. It's like trying mm -hmm. to find the sound. What's the sound? What are we, what am I comfortable with? What, what, what what's yeah. going to be my sound? And obviously with yeah. you, you decided, okay, transition, let's do this project. This feels mm. more like what I want to do. And, you know, he, he, he over the years, he's changed um, his sound dramatically as well. It's, it's... But, but I guess, I guess my, my very, very, very own sound is still, still um, to come. Ooh. Uh, because uh, my first album, Yonu, yes. uh, uh, was... Uh, we did together with Stan Sheripov, who who plays guitar uh, with for Vaiko. Oh, that is interesting. I didn't know that. He's a he's a really uh, excellent human being and a really fun guy and really a great guy to work with and and a great musician. And and you know I I had these uh, these songs these you know on acoustic guitar and you know just a guy I was just a. 20 something guy who who desperately needed needed to do something to, to yeah, yeah. again come out of the closet um and and he then heard something and and he um and most of the stuff uh, i mean the, the sound you hear on yano is is it's um uh like uh, yeah collaboration with uh sten sharip of who put the things, the, the the tunes, the the vibrations he heard, put did, did he, did in, he in, like in 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 the in the in the sort of sort of the, in the right right wavelength in the in the in the right form. So he had a bit of a. Is he older? Is he older than you? Or was he older yeah, he's old. He's is. Uh, I guess he's like ten ten years older. Right. So when he came in, was did you kind of look at it like a? Okay, this guy's going to come in. He's going to help us guide the sound a little bit, and like not like write the songs, but like you know yeah G yeah, yeah given he, that these you got that opportunity it's like okay how can this exactly happen? exactly exactly okay so cool. yeah and with another the next album was already uh, the milliard uh, guys right. and and so on and that's yeah that's that's where i said that that uh, my my very own sound is is still to to be explored and opened the best is yet to come to come exactly <laughs> Uh, again, switching it up. Now, you... Okay, this is what Wikipedia says. 
and I don't trust Wikipedia. But I don't know, Estonian <laughs> Wikipedia seems pretty reliable. I got a lot of information from there, and it doesn't. It seems pretty trustworthy for the time being. But it says here that in 2010 you began presenting a TV show. Now, um, I did want to briefly talk about this. I know, I know this interview is mostly going to be about your music, but I did want to kind of talk about this because I thought this was kind of an interesting thing <clears throat> in, in your life, in your career and such. Uh, so it says that you were in a TV show, you started to... Uh, presenting a TV show called ASD Top 7 so I guess it's like that's a, right yeah like a top 7 music, music videos show. videos right? yes right. yes and it also says that you were a talk show host at uh, Air 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 which is um, the main TV like provider like British thing. broadcast company but yeah, uh, yeah. Estonian little brother so do, is that something that you still do um, right now no, no. Okay, it's just okay. uh, it's quite full on family time and occasional right, right. gigging. Um, so when you were doing that, like obviously, like it's it's an opportunity for exposure. It's an opportunity to do something different. You know, you're a very charismatic man, so it kind of makes sense that you were that, that you were approached for that and stuff. It makes sense, but like would you say that in any way kind of helped or influenced your music did you learn anything from that experience that you kind of took and said hey you know i learned this like this actually helps me with with you know my main thing which is music mm. it was um yeah it was a time when i uh was very uh you know searching for uh, I mean, it was a time when I was quite ex exposed, mm -hmm. uh, and obviously it was after the the um, the Idol show, ah, and uh, I was I was immediately you know approached, and you know of course there was a there was a sort of like a test and there were many others who who wanted to to be the uh, the host but uh, obviously i i got the job i did it for um for a year and okay. then I, I i moved on i mean i can understand yeah. that that makes perfect sense it's yeah. a natural thing i mean a lot of musicians um do the same thing in the uk uh there's many people that appear on shows like the x factor and then weirdly rind up in chat shows which i've always found very bizarre <laughs> like <laughs> i don't know because for me music is at least for me was always my first passion and mm -hmm. whilst doing things like acting and tv is is like a fun mm -hmm. you know, additional thing it's, it's like not the same i don't know it's I, yeah I, yeah also uh i think one of the reasons uh you you could find me doing that stuff is um, I um, I studied uh, journalism, right? And, I, and it was something I, thing, right? I I wanted. I I think I just uh, you know needed some some practice as well. You know, doing interviews and then being in the media. The whole. This is um tati tato ulikuli, right? That's right. So. Tartu. Yeah, like there's many people that say that Tartu is like the cultural city of Estonia. Um, would you say that? Is cool? I'd say <laughs> I, I agree. I uh, We recently uh, went, it's always really, uh, really warming and thrilling to, to visit uh, Tartu. You know, you know, I, 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 I always say, have, yeah. I gotta say, when I went there, like I immediately, yeah, I had like Dublin vibes. For some reason mm. i just looked at it and i was like this is like dublin and dublin is very cultural as well like if you're a musician mm. it's a great place to go um, mm -hmm. so i just kind of wondered like did because you went to the university at a very young age and i just wondered like did that experience have any you know ex influence on your music because when i was at uni i kind of put creative stuff to a side i studied marketing i kind of like put my soul in a box elsewhere and you know i reopened it afterwards and was like oh where have you been all my life but <laughs> um but that's obviously not everyone's story and i know for you um well why did you choose to study at that actually let's ask that uh i think it was uh, like a 
You know, my I have a six years older brother, okay. and uh, he had a, a huge uh, influence on me okay. with everything. You know, when you have a brother, mm. an older brother, then you you want to do the stuff he does, and actually, I can I can see it uh, uh, with my own. Uh, boys as well you know one's uh, three years old and the other's eight months and then the younger one already you know copying <laughs> and uh, obviously my my brother was um and still is um um like a audiophile i'd say and uh i guess i get got all the the uh, uh inspiration right. from him as well and he he did a band uh, actually um uh i really really recommend you uh, recommend to you to go check out the, my brother's band i will i think that i think that's something you'd love well let us let us know what's the they, name they're they're not active anymore for for quite many many years you're breaking my heart. Uh, but, <laughs> You're telling me, but, hey, he's a um, great musician, but now they're not together anymore. What? <laughs> yes, but but he's a truly a great songwriter, a great singer. Okay. And they have uh, two albums, I think, but they're both on Spotify as well. Fantastic. So the band's called uh, called Darling with Darling. an H. Okay. Uh, and uh, Darling had a huge impact on me uh, when i went to when i was a teenager i went to Tartu to visit my brother and his friends and and uh, go to see darling live so um was it like one of those moments where you were kind of in the crowd yeah yeah and you were like i want exactly to do this. <laughs> i was i was i was the biggest fan you know especially during the first years i, I wow uh, I never would have uh, imagined you being like a fanboy or something. Like, <laughs> like I was. Uh, I guess I was. I was. I was the biggest fan. <laughs> mm, always, always being in the front row and always going to to concerts. Oh, that's nice. Like the support mm. side, side of things is really sweet. Yeah. So yeah, my brother went to the to Tartu to do to study, uh, and uh, then you know it was a. Uh, obvious choice for me as well so i guess uh, it was a uh, yeah it was a um, was influence cultural influence and you know also also yeah cultural influence as well you know because there was a sort of a vibe that you know you have to when you finish school you have to you know move go on forward to yeah. to study some you know, climb up, right? And uh, yeah, coming from a um, from a uh, uh, school in the center of Tallinn, you know, and um, it was something we, that was expected oh, from wow. someone who, who finishes that kind of school. Okay. So yeah, then I uh, I decided to to go and study journalism, uh, and I didn't have uh, any clue about the academic life. You know <laughs> what 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 does it mean to 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 study in a university or to right. yeah, yeah. do science basically. Okay. You know, I, my, my impression was that, it, you know, it's fun, you know, being there, my, you know, my brother's there, his, his friends are there, you know, uh, Tartu is really cool, you know, I should go there, you know, and I, I think it's like just a part of uh, becoming more independent as well. I'm curious, but, uh, given that but, like, music, yeah. music is your thing and, and that's you and everything, like back then, because when I was at uni, in the first or second year, I had this moment of like disillusion where I just looked around the uh, study hall and was like, I don't want to be like these people. Like, the, this is not me. They, mm. They're they dressed in like suits and, mm. you know, they're like, 
they're going to do their degree because we we studied like marketing and all this stuff. Mm. Marketing's great and all, but it's not like it's not like music or acting or writing. It's it, it lacks uh, a soul. <laughs> it's oh, yeah, it's, yeah. it's purely there just to sell something. So I had this like disillusion feeling the whole time and, and I saw it through, I got the degree and I kind of figured like, okay, you know, this is great to like get money and stuff, but like I need to be doing creative stuff. Did you have like a similar experience or? Yeah, I, 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 I experienced that kind of a thing as well because I had, at some point I had this dilemma whether to uh, push it and finish the uni yeah, same. <laughs> or, or or whether to to uh you know rock on with my indie band oh damn <laughs> um well i think we're but, all glad that you picked the latter <laughs> actually i i i uh i'm glad that i finished the school because it was really um uh in the end it was really uh interesting and helpful but i i had i had my my big doubts as well right. and uh and i guess um you know the 20s mm -hmm. uh i'd say it's a it's just a it's really similar to being a teenager i think oh, 100%. It's, you know, yeah. about it's about like uh, searching yourself and being, you know, identity problems <laughs> and uh, illusions and stuff like that, and also you know trying out stuff. You know, those three years I'm I finding I lived in Estonia. Yeah. Like when I came back, especially like during this pandemic period, it's like a period mm. of reflection and stuff. And I got to say, like I think I learned more and changed more in that time than I ever did at school or university or any of these things i mean mm. I think it's like life teaches you certain things and life is the real teacher not like institutions or books that's or true all right well i think we've got like a, a fuller picture of you now a, a better understanding of you is, is this your first um like i mean i don't know ask you for your first English interview because that's silly obviously you've you've been interviewed in English before but I think my last English interview uh, was in uh, 2015 in uh, Milan Expo oh. okay. so I was interviewed by uh, by an Italian in English Fantastic. but it was a really really brief interview I think what was so this yeah, yeah I got was this related to your music in some way yeah we went to um we were asked to to play in uh, in expo oh. mm. so we uh we played four nights in a row in the uh, estonian uh, box ah okay uh, so it was really really fun yeah i was, I was going to ask you actually um if you'd actually played shows outside of estonia so obviously yeah you've played in in in, in uh, milan but is there anywhere else you've you've played like any festivals or anywhere uh was it in yes it was in positivos in uh again 2000 no it was 2014 in positivos in, in uh, latvia's uh, oh, wow, biggest yeah. festival and uh I think we did we did some gigs in Berlin uh, with uh, Raul, the two of us as well. Oh. But uh, yeah, I think the uh, the Milan one was is is the most um, exotic and and fun. <laughs> Do you think we're gonna see, we're gonna see you internationally or you, at least in Europe more in the future? Is that something? Certainly, we're certainly. I mean, once the once the borders open, oh yeah, we're gonna run wild. <laughs> Well, if you ever want to play in the UK, I will make sure that it happens, 100%. All right, all right. <laughs> as, as we say in, uh, in Estonia, uh, which means um, I will put this behind my ear. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I would just want to say a big, massive thank you for agreeing to, to be on this show. Likewise. A uh, pleasure. And appreciate uh, and such a such a thorough <laughs> thorough uh, work you've you've done um well, how, think... did, how did i do by the way i think there was a, quite a
quite a lot of stuttering. Very, very well. Thank you so much. <laughs> I mean, f for me, this very much is a case of, of showcasing you because, like I said at the beginning, you know, I feel that your band and Estonian music in general is is highly underrated and the world needs to see it. And, um, you know, I've often joked with Ami that I mentioned before, my, my um, ex-girlfriend and close personal friend, that I can see your music being used in in like things like movies and stuff like that and there's many mm. bands that do this and you know again with the Sigur Ros band um I think that's how they kind of got their big break they had a, one of their songs featured in Vanilla Sky many years ago it was a mm. Tom Cruise movie and you know that's all it really takes is that moment and like you guys have been playing a long time you've been building a long time and you know, I really wanted to do justice with this interview and kind of say like, hey, this is me, did. This is Martin Kuningo. It's just the question of time. <laughs> Absolutely. It's running out for you. <laughs> you can't escape us forever, people. <laughs> okay. Drawing everything to a close, is there anything else that you'd like to kind of share with us in terms of upcoming projects? Maybe some things for for your fans or, or anything else we can expect like for example do we have any you know upcoming singles from the album in let's say the next couple of months we can expect there's gonna be there's gonna be second single from uh, from the album from the upcoming album uh and uh, it's gonna be out in august Ooh. August. And oh wow, that's next month. <laughs> that's next month. That's already yeah. There's a possibility. I mean, August already uh, the day after tomorrow. So theoretically, but okay. I want to see more. Um, uh, yeah, that would be the second of August, then that would... presumably. Do we have thirty days in July and thirty-one? Thirty-one. Okay, you're right. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. So yeah, theoretically no, but yeah, there's going to be somewhere in August we're going to release a second single. Um, uh, we're going to release uh, even more singles. I'm sure. Even uh, we're working on videos, so Excellent. stay tuned. Okay. And uh, lots of love to you. Thank you so much, Martin. And uh, yeah, to all of my listeners, to all the musicians that I know, everyone, all the music fans out there, you can check out Milia Did and Martin Kuningas' music on Spotify for free. You can obviously uh, go to their website and check them out there as well. You can find them. I would say Facebook is probably the best source of updates for you guys. Is there anywhere else yeah. we can reach you or find you for updates? <laughs> Yeah, Facebook is is the most updatable update okay. site. Okay. Uh, also, who wants to hear me rapping? Then uh, do listen to uh, <laughs> Doctor Normal. Yes, I was gonna. <laughs> yes, this is one of um, your very very early early projects from when you first started out. <laughs> it was quite early, but uh, we managed to put an album out last year. Oh really? Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so it's out, listenable. <laughs> Excellent. Well, so the, the album's called World of Ham. World of Ham. Okay, there you heard it there. So and, make sure to uh, it. yeah, it's a it's a collaboration with uh, with the Estonian uh, funk soul monster Lexol uh, dance machine, specifically with uh, one of the oh uh, uh, one of the members, uh, the bassist Martin. So it's something we. Something we uh, yeah Do you know, started I, I started out really a long time ago, but managed to 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 execute last year. I heard about that band so randomly. I was filming a commercial in Tartu randomly, and uh, it was like for a record cleaning machine. <laughs> um, mm. Shout out to Digurita uh, all, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that CD was there by that band, and I was like. That's a funky looking. That's uh, they're they're really great. Uh, <laughs> yes, ex they really excellent band. Yeah. So yeah, go check them out. Go check out all of Martin's music. Go check out Milia Did and their latest single Malubanet Mamutta. And yeah, I will leave all of these links in the YouTube description for those listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Like I said, make sure to go to Milia Did's Facebook page, or you can find all of the information on my YouTube channel as well. 
And uh, yeah, once again, Martin, thank you so much for being a part of this. Thank you so much, Christian. It's uh, it's an honor. Oh, the, the honor is mine, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you to all my listeners. Another episode of the Christian Reef Podcast. And until next time, I bid you adieu.